Nicola and Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Yep, it is. I'm Adam Corolla. That is uh, Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. One last glorious night. We have the honor of having Dr. Spaz amongst us. Woo! Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Bruce is a board certified physician, an internist, and a, uh emergency medicine specialist. Ah, keep going. And addiction medicine specialist, <laughs> and removes pants. From gang members. Yeah. He's well qualified. Can I say hi to the guys at CYA? Sure. <laughs> hi, guys at CYA. California Youth Authority? Yeah. These are uh, guys who are locked up? I got a list. Well, they're, uh, they're rehabilitating. Locked. They can't go home if they want. No. Okay. But they all like you. Up. They listen to you. I like criminals, too. It's, it's Adam Carolla they listen to, not Dr. Drew. Why? Thank you very much. Rehabilitate. Now, when you remove their tats, you remove that teardrop tat oftentimes? Yeah. The one, that teardrop that By stands for being in, in prison? I'm not sure what, even after the hundreds I've removed, I'm not sure exactly what it stands But for. is that the most popular tat you remove? Three dots and... Where are the three dots? Frequently on the wrist or the side of the wrist. The most what, common what, what do the three dots signify? My crazy life. I don't know. You're, well, now that I've given the wrong answer, someone will call in and tell me what it is. But you don't know. You don't ask the guys. You know, I've asked, and it's like, don't. What, are they, what is the the most popular one? Isn't it that cross that's by the uh, between the, uh, the four cross, finger and thumb? Thirteen. This Eighteenth Street is from the Eighteenth Street. I do see a lot of Eighteenth Street guys. A lot of gang guys. A lot of gang guys. All right. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's the gang. Lord's work that you're doing. Yeah, they okay. get jobs easier that way. If it says FDLAPD on your forehead in uh, Tattoo Inc., it's you hard, hard to get a gig, hard right. to get it admitted into the police academy. Yeah. Uh, Priscilla? Yeah? You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, when I was um, five years old, it was like right around there, I was um, on a t-ball team, and I like I was sitting on a bat. It was like the thing that people did, you know, and like it slipped, and it like cut me like down there and I had to like go to the doctor and everything oh boy yeah <laughs> and um you were sitting on a bat yeah right and like and it like cut me somehow I, I still don't know how I tried sitting on a pool stick once it's still in me yeah and it just broke it off yeah. uh Different. all right so you're sitting on a bat which didn't say it doesn't sound like the greatest place to sit but well, you no. slip and it and it cuts you right in in, in the vaginal area at right. five years old Right, and like, and I like bled for, you know, like a few days or whatever, and they didn't put any stitches or anything down there. They just said to, you know, like, let it heal. Uh -huh. I don't really remember that much of it. And so, but now I can't, like, like have an orgasm, so I was wondering if that was related to it or not. It's probably not related at all. Now, you can't pleasure yourself, you, or no. is it during intercourse you can't have an orgasm? No. Do you have a boyfriend? Yeah. And uh, you've had sex with a few guys? Yeah. How about oral sex? Yep. And uh, that doesn't work either? No. Nope. All because of the uh, Louisville vibrator well, you got I, back. <laughs> no, I, I was five. I mean, no, right. I, I just don't know. I'm just like... Okay, here's the deal. And I think Bruce agrees with this. There's probably no connection. Right. Well, there's serious. plenty of 20-year-old girls who can't have an orgasm. And you're one of them. Right. And it wasn't because they got a bat put up them. Right. 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 Minor trauma at that age is not related to not having an orgasm oh. at your point. But All right. so, there are other questions we could... No, you just stick with the same guy, make sure. you got a much better chance of getting one through oral sex. So right. that's well, the place to look. I've tried that. I mean, I've tried everything. Yeah. Well, if you get the right guy and he hangs out there long enough, something may happen. Yeah, I hope so. You ever try doing something for yourself? Yeah, doesn't that work either. Doesn't work either? No. Nope. How about the bathtub? Bathtub, tried the bathtub. You did? Yeah. With the water on? Yeah. I see. Uh, there, we can get into, are there any other issues in terms of intimacy? Uh, in um, no. No, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm happy. All right. All right. Well, listen, here's, here's the deal. Here's the sad truth. Stop me if you think I'm wrong here, Bruce. But just do it with one word. Don't, don't ramble on. Hmm. Uh, there's a certain percent of percentage of women at age 20 who just cannot have an orgasm. Right. Uh, I would agree. At age 20, the percentage of women who cannot have an orgasm through any circumstances, I would say, would be 
twenty uh, percent, maybe fifteen or twenty percent, something like that. Now, at age thirty, that number probably drops down to about five percent. Would you agree I with would that? Agree. So, time is on your side. You'll eventually work it out. Call us back in ten years. I'm sure Bruce will still be here. And uh, if it's not, if you can't have the orgasm, then then it's time to look into it. Until then, just find one guy, stick with him, and see if you guys can't work it out. Andy? Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Yeah, um, I've, like, never had a girlfriend before. And uh, I've kind of lately, ever since I went to college, been a little more into my right hand than I should. Mm -hmm. Or at least so, I think. And, like, I'm wondering, like, if that's having, like... Is, if that's like a result of not having a girlfriend or if it's like affecting my ability to associate with women or mm -hmm. um yeah it's basically i mean how long have you been dating your right hand <laughs> well if, if we want to go back to way back to first contact it's probably when i was like 13 or 14. so you met your right hand when you were 13 or 14. yeah you immediately begin dating oh or you're just friends for a while it, it was just kind of off and on until i went to college and then yeah. now it's like I live like in an apartment now, with, and I have like a roommate, but he lives in town and he's always gone, so I basically mm -hmm. have a lot of time to myself. Yeah, that, that's what happened with me and my right hand. I, I, I remember meeting my right hand about the eighth grade, and uh, we didn't hit it off. There was no initial attraction, but we did pass each other in the hall, and we hung out a little, and we had some mutual friends like the left hand and my testicles, and we all used to hang out together smoke pot and drink some uh, Boone's Farm wild berry wine in the park and one night my right hand and my penis just got together and it was magic huh. it was a few years after we originally met but they've been together ever since <laughs> <laughs> going going strong it's a lovely story how many they, they recently celebrated their 20th anniversary i don't know if you know that uh, i didn't see the picture well, you're at my house you saw the picture of my right hand <laughs> up on the mantelpiece didn't you no i i, I must have missed that but hmm. I, now, Andy, how many times a day are we talking? Like, minimum one, like, no less. Like, maximum probably seven or 14. eight. Fourteen. So, seven or eight. <laughs> well, one, <clears throat> one's one thing, seven or eight's another. You know, masturbation can be part of an obsessive sexual uh, practice. How and dare you? If the way things, a lot of things like this go, if they do interfere with what would be a normal relationship or uh, your drive for such and you prefer the the company of your hand as Adam might no. as Adam would no. then you might need to look into this and see somebody I think seven or eight times a day you're not uh, having a normal relationship what what what's going on here Andy well, Andy listen to me brother your sperm is your motivation in life look at that as the engine in the fuel tank of your car yeah. Without it, the car's just parked in the driveway. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. The It is the fuel that gets you down the street to the market and into life. You understand? Yeah. And that sperm is in, in the sack, the fuel tank of your body, motivates you. And you need to build up a little once in and, a while. And thank God there's not more flexibility in your back or you'd never leave the house. That's right. <laughs> you almost didn't leave my house. Bruce came over tonight, everybody. We ate, now it's just close to a hand job. But here's... Oh, don't, oh, don't, don't play stupid now. Listen, Andy, don't whack off for... Uh, I was going to say a week, and then I pictured myself not doing it for a week and realized I wouldn't No work. one would live with you. Yeah, do it, do it for uh, two or three days and see if it doesn't give you a little more sexual energy, and then go out and try to get some chick drunk. Uh, uh, all right, buddy. Horrible advice. Listen, there's, there's nothing wrong with you. Just ask women out. Start at the bottom and work your way up. Anything like that can become obsessive. And That's right. If, if you're learning, if you're teaching your brain, you're stimulating your mesolimic dopamine system, you're getting the old dopamine level up through self-stimulation, it could become a problem. And this guy, it sounds like he's subverting his uh, yeah. his normal drive through masturbation. Fine, so lay off. You don't want to know about his relationship with his mother and father. Amy, no. Yes. You're 25. I think you're bypassing my calls, my choices. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 25. I want to talk to a chick. What's up there, Amy? Um, I've been really, I think, probably depressed lately. Um, about two weeks ago, this old biddy, this nurse that I work with, said that I that she saw me test driving a PT cruiser on company time, which wasn't true. And I got it cleared up with the boss man and everything. But right. for, for about a week, I haven't been able to get out of bed before one. Um, it's all I can think about. I burst into tears frequently. Well, what's all you can think about? Uh, all I can think about is that that people at work 
must think I'm, <coughs> sorry, a dishonest person or something. And I'm a psych nurse, and I'm all of a sudden I'm thinking like, lying, you know it. Yeah, listen, <laughs> nobody, nobody at work really cares about you. you got to look at it that way. <laughs> That's, I guess I'm realizing it. It's oh. bursting my idealistic bubble. Psych nurse. What a miserable, miserable job that <laughs> must be. It's so much fun, Adam, but now I'm thinking, like, maybe I need an antidepressant. I don't know what the hell's wrong well, with Well, you, you got the keys to the medicine cabinet, don't you? <laughs> this sounds like I fun. Sure I'll do. Where was she when I was working on this boring side? Listen, just go grab a handful of something and see what works for you. White ones uh, work. If white ones don't work, the blue ones or the green ones might work. Right, Bruce? You don't sound like you have a real flat affect to me. No, sound like you sound much less depressed perfect. than a lot of people who claim not to be depressed who call this show. Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's endogenous depression and there's situational depression. It sounds pretty situational, in which I case... Like hold is on, is endogenous the same as indigenous? No. <laughs> You're an indigenous <laughs> native to the uh, armpit. San Fernando Valley. Right, exactly. Yes, the armpit of the world. Exactly. And endogenous means it, that it, it's always with you. It's idiopathic. I think it comes from with... It doesn't have a specific cause. Hold on a second. Oh, God. Is that Are what it means? A medical quiz? Does that, no, here's what it means. Uh, here's what it sounds like, though. That The reason these two words, indigenous and endogenous, are so close is indigenous means these are people who are always here. Original people. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Right. Like uh, the aborigines are indigenous people to the outback of Australia. Uh-huh. Right? Are you, a, are you a philologist listen. on well, the side? Listen, but endogenous... Mm -hmm. Means that this is this is a depression that's native. always always been native always been with you, or it's from yeah always or originating. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's the same word. This is being pronounced differently. No, 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 it's not the same word. You sure? Well, one's a doctor word, one's a uh, sociologist. Yeah, but a doctor words like to take words that everyone else uses, well, yeah. pronounce them a little bit so they get paid more money. Oh yeah, that that's absolutely true. Uh, you look up endogenous, okay. Amy. Yeah, do you have any advice for me? Yeah, well, first off, screw that old bag at work. <laughs> yeah. I smell a little mercy killing coming on. Yeah. And, uh, listen, what are you, how overweight are you? <laughs> oh, God. Come on, baby. Oh, only 15 pounds. 15? Yeah. All right. What about losing that 15? You need a nice man. You need a, you're, you're one good humping away from a good day. <laughs> you got a man? Well, no, actually. No, no, you go home, you make some top rum, and you open the Reader's Digest, and you play with your cat mittens, right? I have no cats. That's pitiful. What would no. you do, roll over and kill one while you're sleeping? No, I, I have a social life. It's not that bad. All right, it's you do? Look, along with, along with the mild depression, you'll lose your appetite for a while. And let me tell you something about that 15 pounds. That's 25 pounds. You're being yeah, way too you're, right. you're being way you're too right. kind to yourself. And l let me just say this. And I, I don't want to be cruel, but guys are cruel, so I might as well I, I might as well tell the truth here. Yeah. There's many beautiful women with uh, beautiful personalities, they got a lot going for them, and they're perpetual 25, 30 pounds overweight and they've done it their whole life and it takes them right out of the dating game. They get a little dates, but not with the guys they want. Mm -hmm. You could drop that 15 or 20 pounds, it wouldn't be any big deal, and then Date all the uh, hot guys. You're inspiring me. All right, so just just do it. Okay. All right, stop eating so many carbohydrates and then yes, eat a little sir. more protein, get a little exercise, and you'll immediately, immediately feel bike. better. Ride your mountain bike. Start taking walks. Listen to classical music and take long walks. You'll feel better and stop worrying about old people at work. You're fine. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> you feeling good? Dave? Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to look up. Bruce, look up endogenous. <laughs> Okay. You better pray you're right, gosh, oh boy. God. You better yeah, pray, yes. Yeah, I had to kind of make it my question. You I did what? I to about Taboo 2. Oh, okay, go ahead. Just got the movie? Dave is 17, yes. Taboo 2. Yes. I <laughs> yeah. see does. You remember this part? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do play the guitar. It knows how to please in every detail. You know the theme singer. He can do more than you ever imagine. And do it with style. He does it with me. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, boy, you're doing a lot of jagging off. I know that you thought that you knew it. Bruce, jump in. Come on, buddy. You know the words. Don't know the words. Here's a good part. Bruce, you know the words. Come on, Dr. But you don't. I'm listening to these spazzes sing, and I'm reading a dictionary. He only reveals what he wants.
wants you to see and then shows it all. And when he does, he satisfies me. All right, turn that off. I, I really like, I'd like to see Taboo 2 the musical. What is Taboo 2? It's got to be a porn movie. One of, of some the best sort. porn movies ever made. <laughs> With this music in it? Dave, the best movie ever made. Yeah, where did you get hold of this? I got it on the internet. They show the whole series. There's like 15 of them. Mm -hmm. I know, but two is my favorite. <laughs> do you, hey, do you, yeah. know, have you ever seen the, that 70s show? Yeah. The sister on that is the, looks just the same as the sister on the 70s show. Yeah, she does. Yeah. She does look a little uh, like her. Jeez, I can't remember her name. I, I'm going to study that film uh, tonight. Like there's a Bruder oh. film. I study that thing yeah. back and forth. Yeah, you're your there's right hand. There's music on it. Yeah, I love that Bambi. And what about Junior? He's yeah. a good guy. What a gentleman, banging his mom and his sister. Who's oh. Ron Jeremy in that movie? My friends and I are trying to figure that out. What's that? Who's Ron Jeremy? What, what's oh. his, what's his, one is what's his part? Uh, Ron Jeremy is orgy goer number 14. He doesn't really have a part in that. He just kind of walks on and has sex with everybody. Is this one of his first movies? It's during the orgy. It's earlier in his career. It was probably, yeah, pretty early in his career. It was probably only his 250th porn movie. He's a remarkable intellect. <laughs> he's I, of course, met him filling it on for drilling oh, the line. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's a else? gentleman and a scholar. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, are you saying you didn't recognize Ron Jeremy? No. Okay. Ron Jeremy, you, you know the orgy scene about three-quarters of the way through the thing? Yeah, yeah. I want to be going and coming with you, baby. You remember you that part? scared yeah. me. You know yeah. this movie that Yeah, long? I know all the words. Oh. Uh, he is the uh, fat, hairy Jewish guy with the big penis yeah. who's... Uh, He's doing those two chicks from behind. Oh. You know, oh, that's in a, him. and then he's trying to figure out who's the one. Like, yeah, yeah the hair goes like three quarters of the way up his penis. Yeah, he does this one g girl from behind, and then he switches over and does this other one for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's him. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. All right, I'm glad I could clear that up. There's a lot of 17 year olds who can't spot Ron Jeremy's old work. Uh, uh -huh. Your knowledge of pornography is frightening. Second to none. Did you find endogenous? Yeah, yet? I'm looking for indigenous. All right. I, I was correct, of course. Uh, Wendy, you're 19. What's up? Um, I've got TMJ syndrome, mm -hmm. and because of that, I can't keep my mouth open very wide for very long. Right. And when I'm trying to go down on a guy, I can't complete it. I see. And I'm just wondering if I could get advice on how to make it last longer or how to do it. Faster or better, I don't know. Be interesting. Yeah. God bless you for asking. <laughs> How's your ear, Sam? It's fine. Would that work? No. No. Uh, what about this TMJ, Bruce? TMJ is a very <clears throat> diverse disorder. It ranges from something that's very real and oh. serious to uh, to something, something, something that's quite that. psychosomatic. I see. So, I uh, have you been to a good uh, oral surgeon? Have you had a CT scan or a study of your TMJ, or is this something you went to the GP and he said you got TMJ? My when I was thirteen, I got PD. braces, and my dentist told PFD. me, and he referred me to some specialist. And uh -huh. I went there, and they didn't do anything more. They just told me that I had it, and if I if it got too bad to come back, well, and if you open your mouth past a certain point, it locks open. Yeah. Okay. How do you get it? I mean, if it, if you really have that, you end up in the emergency room trying to get it unlocked. I mean, yeah. But how many times does that wrong, happen? What's wrong with it staying open for the BJ? It's just like it um, past a couple minutes, it just starts really hurting, and I can tell it's crumping up. Right. And so I have to stop, or else it will crump up, and it, I can't get it closed again. My strategy with you would be to get going on my own, get about you know seven eighths of the way there, and then have you just hop on for the last uh, last you know the home home stretch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you I've, take I've done it like that. I just it. Kind of sucks. Do you yeah. take Motrin or muscle relaxant? Do you have anything like that? No. Well, Motrin's over the counter, of course. So you could try taking, your, as long as you're not allergic or. Uh, so you, she could take a few Motrin before she you know, prostituted herself out to some drunken sailor. <laughs> T uh, TMJ is just a really difficult to pin down disorder, and the treatment's notoriously ineffective. Many of them. Well, and what, what exactly? Could be a mouthpiece or something like that. Yeah, they try various things like that. The oral surgeons will frequently recommend surgery if they can pinpoint. Yeah, I don't want to do that. that yeah, I got a little of that myself, actually. I do. I mean, draw clicks all the time. Always pops. Uh, Wendy, uh, yeah. why don't you go back to the specialists and see what they have to say? 
Yeah, now that you threw out a lessons in your, you know, your bone structure, you're done growing. Yeah. Uh, get examined and see if they want to do any studies of that area and tell them what your symptoms are. But well, many, many you, times you end up. You tell them the symptoms. You go listen. Ninety-seven out of the last hundred and ten guys I tried to blow in the last six-month period, uh, my jaw stuck open. And that's an alarmingly high percentage. <laughs> and their jaw will drop open and they yeah. will not know what to do. <laughs> All right, go talk to the specialist. Tell them it's uh, still doing it. And go for that Motrin. Say, so take, what, two Motrin? What, an hour? You take four. You take 800 milligrams. Take four? Yeah. How long before? Yeah, the, an uh, hour before. Hour? Hey, Bruce, what about, thanks. What about that, like, with stuff like that? How long should you, how long does it take something like that to get into full effect in your body? An hour or so for? About an hour or so. It depends. Something like any Tylenol. Empty or full or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to, if you want the full effect of a Motrin, a Tylenol, or something like that, and you want to be able to sort of time it for when it's going to be at its at its peak, what would you say? You look at the dosage schedule for for drugs, and if it's a drug that lasts 12 hours, a drug that lasts something that lasts four hours, you'd figure that it's, you know, your peak levels would be at Two hour hours, and a half, two oh. hours. Yeah. Oh, I see. So if it's six, so it's going to be if it's six hours, the peak might. I mean, if it's be, if it's twelve hours, the peak might be about six hours. Yeah, depending on many pharmacologic variables, variables which I probably forgotten long ago. Right. All right. Well, we will uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. When we come back, you want to speak to Jay? Uh, he gets violent when somebody breaks up. With him. Yeah, I don't like that. What about Lisa over here? Yeah, Lisa. An experience with another girl with boyfriend who touched the other girl. Oh. Let me, let me see it real quick. Lisa? Yes. You have a boyfriend? Well, my husband, actually. Oh, your husband? Oh. Yes. Well, that's good. And uh, you had an experience with another woman? Yes. And your husband was supposed to do what? Just watch and whack? Um, yeah, well, we were all laying semi close to each other. And, uh, -huh. uh he was just supposed to lay and watch and be more involved with me, and you know, he ended up grabbing her. Yeah, he ended up reaching up, and I didn't find out till the next day that he ended up grabbing on her. When she told you? Um, yeah, it was. They both kind of. I see. I, I kind of tricked him into telling me, saying, "Why don't you tell me your side of the story?" And oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, All right, hold on, hold on. This is what I love about women, by the way. I love when they come at you with. Uh, I know something. They do it all the time. I spoke to Gina Kimmel. What do you know about Saturday? And you go, uh, I don't know. What did she tell you? Well, forget about what she told me. Why don't you tell me what you know? And you know, see, guys don't pull that crap. Guys just walk over, you know, smack them with a beer bottle <laughs> and go home or something. You feel they are, and they leave, but they don't pull that. But the, the secret is the woman pulls yeah, it on you. You, know, if you get the deer in the headlights syndrome, yeah. you're finished. And you, you, know the worst, you know the worst thing is, is when they make up something where they don't know anything right. after like a bachelor party or something, and they'll do this. Now, they don't really know anything, and they try to get you to cave. And this is why you never cave. Because they'll do this. You'll come back from the bachelor party, and they'll go, so did you have a good time? You go, yeah. You always do that stupid thing as a guy. Yeah, it was okay. I have nothing great. Guilty. Yeah, because women, you know what I love about women? They get pissed when you have a good time and they're not there. They'll go, how was, uh, how was that weekend? Now, you could have had the time of your life, but you have to downgrade a little. Right. I'll give it a five. You know, nothing great. It was okay. It would have been better if you were there, honey. Oh. It was just okay. You know, the usual bunch of guys sitting around drinking beer. No big deal. I was ready to get out of there. That's always the one I pull. I was ready to get out of there after oh, about yeah. an hour. <clears throat> Jimmy didn't want to leave until 5.30 in the morning. I thought, what could I do? I was ready to go at 8. <laughs> he was drunk and I couldn't leave. I was ready to go at 8. Well, oh, oh, you talking about the uh, DUI? Well, I, you know, I, 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 mean, I had to drink. What was I going to do? Well, listen, if I didn't touch the stripper, they would have ran me out of there on a rail. <laughs> hey, everyone, everyone else just did it. It just kind of forced me to do it. But you know, so what chicks will do, and I know this is probably one of your moves. If Doug goes to a bachelor party and you have no idea what on what went on at the bachelor party, you try to give him the slip. You go, uh, I uh, I talked to Janine. Uh, uh, I talked to Janine about uh, that's uh, Larry's husband. Yeah, she told me everything. She, she did. Oh yes. Like what? Oh everything. <laughs> Well, and then the guy starts caving. Uh, I didn't. I was the one who brought the mule in. I just <laughs> held it. I just held the mule. I was, in, and then it's like, oh, with the mule. And then uh, here's how this worked. Now you talk to Janine, and Janine talks to Larry. So uh, Doug told me about the mule. Oh, that that 
sea sucker. I'll kill him. He pro now now then it starts spinning out. This is how cops do it. Yeah, cops do it this way. They, they good cop, bad right. cop. They pull the guy across. Say, uh, yeah, where where? What do you know? Uh huh. Well, that's not what I heard. Meanwhile, half the time they didn't hear anything. No. Right, Ann? Well, you know what? Hmm. If you would have stayed home with your woman, <laughs> there right. wouldn't be any problem at all. I've heard that before. Right, but Anne, seriously. You be, guys create the chaos. I know, but be honest. You, right? you have pulled that on a boyfriend or a husband where you said you, you, you let him think that, that you knew, knew yes. much more than you really knew. Why not? I want to know what happened. Right, right. It's the equivalent... It's equivalent to like a boss saying to his employee like every every month, I know you've been stealing. Or or when, you know, your mom would walk in your room and go, I smell pot. Who's been smoking? I smell pot. Someone's been smoking pot in here. She <laughs> doesn't smell anything, but she's waiting for you to just yell out one of your friend's names or something or cave or do something stupid. That's why you just can't cave. You got to just stick with it. Just stay with it. It's as obvious to women as that TV commercial where the guy's out on the dock and he's been wearing the glasses and he goes, oh, my boss doesn't know where I am and he's got the big sun, sunburn around his eyes. You ever see that one? No, I've never it's seen like that. I have. I, yeah, the guys I have that go skiing and All they right, have the big we got it, Bruce. raccoon oh, We got it, Bruce. Okay. All right, bye. All right. Bruce is my uh, the show. Would you like me to read Endogenous for you? No, we'll take a little break. Uh, <laughs> Bruce will have his reading of the dictionary after this. From Adam Carolla, that's the uh, notorious lecherous <laughs> Dr. Spaz <laughs> over there. He knows I'm right. Shut up. I gave Ann the whole skinny on Dr. Spaz over there. You got me all wrong. With Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All right, so now, you looked up indigenous. And endogenous. And you looked up endogenous. Endogenous. Indigenous means? Indigenous means... Where are my reading glasses? Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you you Having never failed to disappoint. I know. It's my goal. Having originated in and being produced, growing, living, or occurring naturally in a particular region or environment. All right. That's indigenous. Endogenous. A, caused by factors inside the organism or system. B, produced or synthesized within the organism or system. All right. Therefore, an endogenous depression is from within rather than from... The environment. Environmental cause. All right. Very good, Dr. Bruce. Right as usual. Lisa? Yeah. Still say the words are connected. Mm. You're 22. What's up? Oh, yes. You have, uh, you're married. Yes. Do you have any kids? Yes. No. Oh. How many? One. No. Oh, okay. I guess that's all you could have. <laughs> that's, that's the least possible. And you were, uh, having, fooling around with your husband in bed with a woman. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the deal was, is, you were just going to have this little uh, interlude with this woman uh -huh. in front of your husband. Yes. But that the agreement was he was not going to join in. Yes. And when was this agreed upon? Um, well, I've been involved with this girl twice now, and this was the second time. And after the first time, we talked about it, and we said that the men were not going to get involved. They were just going to watch. What do you or, mean, the men? Yes, or her husband also. Uh -huh. But was her husband wasn't there this time. I see. And you guys were all in bed. Yes. And she was uh, doing oral sex on you. Uh -huh. And you were doing it on her. Uh -huh. And what was your husband doing? Um, he was being involved with me, messing around with me. Yeah, like he, he was working the, the uh, top side while she was down below? Yes. I see. And then when did, yeah, but see, here's what I'm asking, Goofball. When did he cross the line and work her over? Um, when I was working on her, he was kind of messing around with me, and then he reached up and grabbed her. When you were going down on her? Yes. I see. And uh, couldn't you see that from your vantage point? Well, we were, like, messing around all over. and I see. I we see. Were just all right. All right. <laughs> So yeah, how how big an offense is this to uh, this your crazy bisexual lifestyle? I mean, this really crossed the line. This really uh, offended your delicate sensibilities. Well, I was just wondering if I had the right to be angry. Nah. Well, listen, you guys had an agreement, but the agreement is sort of like this. It's like two guys saying, "Let's get drunk and let's have a boxing match," but no punching in the gut. In about round three. And uh, after a pony cake, one guy slugs the other right. guy in the gut. It's kind of like, well, you agreed on it, but on the other hand, the fist and beer were flying. What did you expect? I guess is my answer. And, and listen, the agreement was made under duress. He's like, he's dying to get in bed with two oh, women. Listen, he'll tell you anything. Listen, he would agree. He, he would agreed uh, 
to a uh, asbestos enema <laughs> at that point. Do you understand? Number, I see you two going number one and two, you ask if it's okay to be angry. I mean, do you, you have a very arbitrary uh, ruling in your marriage, it sounds like, as to what's okay and what's not. I mean, when you start doing stuff as a threesome or you're having any sexual contact with somebody else, whether it's male or female, you're asking for the destabilization of the marriage. I mean, that's just sort of the rule with threes now, listen, threesomes. And uh, let me tell you something. The whole reason this was instigated in the first place is so she could get angry because she's looking to destabilize. There's, What's there's wrong with you, Lisa? On, right. Where, where's your daddy? Uh, where's my dad? Yeah. He's here. What happened? Nothing. What'd he do? Nothing. Be honest. Nothing. What'd he do to you? Nothing. He beat on you? Uh, no. Huh? No. Alcoholic? No. When were you molested? I was not. Raped? No. Nope. What happened to you? Nothing. Who didn't pay attention to you? Nobody. Okay, daddy, so well, I'm not done. What did daddy do for a living? He was a millwright. Aha! Uh -huh. A what? Works millwright. with metal. Yeah, mills. He works with metal? He does everything in a mill. Yeah, what What kind of mill? Like a wood mill, wood products. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. It's all coming in and we're clear. And he didn't drink? Nope. No. And he's together with mommy? Yep. And what got you so chaotic? Then don't be defensive. Be honest now. Where'd your parents drop the ball? Daddy didn't pay attention? No. What? He did? He loved you? Yes. He respected you? Yeah. He took care of you? Yeah. What happened to you? <laughs> okay. What Lisa. happened to you? I don't know. What's wrong with you? Are you getting the message from Adam? Do you understand what he's trying to say? I mean, yeah. what you did, it does... It's evidence of, of a chaotic relationship, of, of something being wrong, whether that the origin of that is in your family of origin, with your relationship with your dad or your mom, or substance abuse, or... Hold on, I'm not done. When did you move out of the house? Uh, 16. Oh, you moved out at 16. Mm. Yes. Why? Because I was being a rebellious teenager. Uh-huh, but you, everything was great at home. You just moved out at 16. Well, I mean, not, we were having the normal teenage parent conversations, but... And you moved... Where do you move out at 16? I moved in with my husband. At 16? Yeah. And, and now you're 22. Well, how old is your husband now? He's 25. So uh, he was, what, three years old? So he was 19? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he moved out? Yes. All right, hold on a second. Bruce, you know goddamn well everything's great on the home front. Nobody moves out at 16. I mean, this ain't a little house on the prairie, for Christ's sake. This is this is uh, five years ago. Whether or not it is, you're not going to get listen, that out of her. I, I, listen, I don't have to get it out of her. You move out of your house as a 16-year-old because you and your parents are going at it. That's that's trouble on the home front. Well, don't give me that. Uh -huh. I, uh, what the f is wrong with you? They're teenagers. What, what is why, why can't you agree with me? What is a crime in you? What do you mean? Huh? Huh? You name me a family where the kid moves out at 16. Uh, uh, not yes, goes off to college. Not goes off to college. Not, uh, not, not, uh, gets some sort of a scholarship somewhere. Moves out because they can't handle the parents. They're you kids. say that's good? That's fine? There's no problem with that? I have to learn to answer in two syllables. Idiot. Shut up. I'm done with you. <laughs> Lisa? Listen, you're chaos queen. You're going to screw this relationship up. You're going to screw your kids up. You're going to have the same crappy relationship that you have with your parents with your kids. You talk to your parents? Yes. You do? Yes. You guys uh, put, put whatever you had to put behind you? Yes. All right. When did you lose your virginity? Uh, right, with your uh, with this screwball? No. What's your husband do? He... Oh. You talking about insulation insulator? Yes. Oh, he's crawling around attics all day, putting in R19? Yeah. Oh, buddy. All right, now listen to me. How old is your kid? He's six months. All right, that that is your focus. Your number one job in life is not to screw that kid up. Do you hear me? Yes. Now, you have to have a stable relationship so you don't screw that kid up, and you can't have a stable relationship when you're screwing around with the, your friends and neighbors. All right? Yeah. So, whatever happened, happened. Forgive your husband. Put it behind you. Focus on being a good couple and taking care of this youngin, okay? Okay. Oh, please. All right. Thank you very much. Wait a second. You're married? all right. You take care of yourself. And, have, and the world is an okay place now that you've had your tirade. Listen, jackass, with the is it okay to move out at 16? That doesn't suggest any any trauma on the home front. You've got to give me that 
Well, first off, you don't even make a sound to the mic. That's what I love about you. <laughs> Listen. All right, all right, cool down. Then Let's I not argue. Then I get the puss. I get the, well, it could go either way, puss. First of all, she got married. To the, she was too young when she got married. They've changed a yes. lot. She's and he both have the feelers out for other stuff. And the thing is on the rocks. They they need to admit what's going on and either decide to work on it together, but quit the threesomes. All right. quit I want you around. to give me an example of someone who moved out at 16 now where everything was great. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you about that. Don't the, give me that push. Fred Jorgensen over on uh, no, Space shut Street. Shut up, there. you jackass. No, you son, know, listen, Jeff. If your kids moved <laughs> out when they were 16, they'd have a heart attack. I'd have a party. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, boy. What name is that? He's just a dick. L I agree, Drew. L Luella. Luella? Yeah. Luella. I must have yeah. put so much ecstasy in your fried yeah. calamari tonight. Is that how you spell Luella? Yeah. Come on. Jesus. Okay. All right. What's how up you there? doing? Fine. How Better are you? Than, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, a yeah. tough night so oh, far. Oh, shut up. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm a real yeah. doctor, and I'm getting Sooner. called names and shake abuse. You don't even talk. Sort of like you Drew just there shake your head. Where's I ask Drew? you a question. Uh, I moved out when I was 17, too. <laughs> and uh, Luella, did you have Genghis the Khan for a father or uh, an abusive uh, mother? I, I didn't get along with neither one of them. But were you abused? But I was daddy's girl, though. <laughs> I still didn't get along with them. Well, you're spoiled. Uh, well, I was kind of abused, but kind of not. Uh, it was both parts. I was... I was just real, real rebellious. Yeah, but listen, <clears throat> first off, and I know this, it's only one year, but there is a big difference between 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go off to college at 17 or 18. 16 is, is very young. I want to yes. read the Corolla and, book on adolescent and, uh, and development. Uh, listen, you show me a 16-year-old who moves out of the house, and I'm going to show you trouble at the house. Oh, I tried to move out when I was 16. <laughs> yeah, now what, why? Ah, uh, because I couldn't get along with my parents at all. And what state are you calling from? I'm calling from Ohio. Oh, this is or Indiana, up. actually. I just moved from Ohio to... Well, this is the Indiana exception, so mm -hmm. that's right. why the other was 16. Yeah. They were from you California. You don't know what you're talking yeah. about. What's up? Okay. I was wanting to know a question on my period. I haven't had a period in five, in five almost five and a half years. All right. Hold on. Anderson's got a pee, so hold on. Okay. All right. Well, we got to take a break. Okay. This is smoke cigarettes. All right. Like Anderson's jumping up and down over there like uh, like a because you're abusing me. kid in the back of a. He doesn't class. like it when you're abusive. Listen, to me. I don't like that. Uh, I don't, why? What's in it for you not to d agree with me all the time? I'm just when honest, I'm right. You know, I don't. I don't need this. Honest, kid. what? But I don't that's need this job. you know. You do that same crap Drew does. Here's what you two do. You think because uh, Daddy paid for a degree, well, you you think you you got one up on me? Then I lay something out, and because it, because it's my idea, you don't agree with it. It's because it's flawed that I don't agree with it, and I'm honest with you. And you blow a, you have a one of your little uh, neurons shaking around up there, making some you, noise. You, what What do you think the percentage of 16 year olds who move out of the house just for the sake of moving out and move in with a boyfriend? What percentage of that isn't because there's some trauma on the home front or some chaos on the home front? The, the chaos. They just move out because it's time to move out at 16 and they found a guy. That they're not seeking refuge somewhere. There's a difference between abuse perpetrated on an adolescent or a child and a dysfunctional family unit where there's no limits or boundaries set and the kid is just pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm not saying the chick was uh, chained to a radiator and beaten with a tire chain. I am saying that the chaos that she experienced at, on the home, the same chaos that forced her out at 16, is a link to the chaos that she currently has. That's not the way you're asking. You're asking in terms of abuse. How were you abused, honey? What did they do to you? Everything was great, except for I moved out when I was 16. Why? Because... She's still fairly immature, so she doesn't understand that what's not great might have been Listen, just... Listen, my Paris point was didn't... I was making a link from the chaos of today to the chaos of yesterday. All right, Jack Hole, and you did nothing to help me bridge that link. We'll be right back. All the right. missing link is right. what I we'll work be back. with. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Bruce over there. Dr. Drew will uh, be back in tomorrow night, and until then, we're kicking my kicking Dr. Right. Dr. Bruce's ass. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. You know what I notice when I'm right. Mm -hmm. When I sit here confidently, it pisses you off, and you just go off like a little frustrated kid. I sit there confidently nodding or shaking your head. Yeah, it pisses microphone. you off. Drew does the same thing. I've been on the radio for 15 years. He'll shake his head into the mic. He'll nod his head into the mic. He's agreeing. <laughs> All right. That's right. Luella? Yeah. 
Uh, all right. So now you haven't had your period in uh, five years? Almost five and a half years. Uh, but you had a normal period at some point? Yeah. In adolescence? Yeah. Okay. I had an, um Norplant for five years, and like the day that I got my Norplant in, pretty much I stopped right after I got it put in and stopped having my periods. And then, and then just... Um, Recently, I had it took out. It was at the end of August that I had it took out, and my doctor said that it would. I would start having my period within three weeks to three months. And by the way, it's not had it took out. It's had it tooked out. Mm-hmm. You understand? <laughs> yeah. And, um, there you and go. he said that I would have a period within three weeks to three months, and I still haven't had one. And I was wanting to know, is and, there and any possible... Wait, how long since he's taken it out? Since the end of August. All right, but ha not having a period for five years is because of the Norplant. Mm-hmm, So we're not, So we won't, we won't count that, right, Bruce? Right, it just takes time for things to kick back in. Have you gone... Are you, hit, are you overweight or are there any... Yeah, major. Okay, so there could be other reasons that you're not having your periods come back as quickly as possible, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes people that are overweight, there are various syndromes that occur that uh, cause that what to happen. Happened? Have you gone back to, had a follow-up visit? Have, has he done any no. hormone levels? No. You, um, you need to, I mean, you know. How, was, how overweight are you? About 75 pounds. Uh-huh. What's up with that? Um, I just started gaining it really bad when I got the Norplant put in. Oh, really? And You're fat. True, please. Yeah, I uh, am. No, no, actually. Don't, don't listen to True. He's very rude. <laughs> actually, I am. All right, well, that's all right, baby. You, you know, the the good thing about being fat is you know who really loves you. Huh? You, know? you find out who really loves you. Yeah, you don't Oh, get... I know who loves me. <laughs> who? The vibrator? My boyfriend. I see. Yeah, you, black guy? Huh? Black no. no. You don't. I'm uh, just curious. You don't have a. Uh, you don't have a bunch of uh, guys chasing you for that tight ass. You know. You know <sighs> it's love. Is what uh, I'm saying. I don't have too much of a problem. Yeah. No. I know. No. I just, listen. Uh, there's plenty of girls starving themselves and throwing up, and what they don't realize is there's a lot of guys out there, like a little cushion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's good times, right? I was wanting to know, though, um, is there any chance that I could end up pregnant before I start having my period? Good question. Uh, yes. You can ovulate and, you know, people, that that does happen. And it depends on what you consider, you know, your period. After all that time, it depends on how thin or thick your endometrium is. Uh -huh. But, you know, bottom line is you have to ovulate to have, have an egg to get, to get fertilized. Uh -huh. So whether or not you notice sloughing of the endometrial tissue or not. It depends how much was there. How that's much your period, up. right? The sloughing? Yeah. So, All right. So, I mean, that's, Luella, you need yeah. to get, get get back and talk to the guy and uh, get, get those tests and see if the weight's a factor and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, once you're on something like that, when you ovulate and what your period's going to be like initially, it's really hard to predict. So, all But right. you need to follow up. That You've gone way too long without following up with your doctor. God bless your boyfriend. Kurt? Yeah, how you guys doing? You're 20. What's up? Yeah. Yeah, I just started working at a paleontologist, you know, one of them foot doctors. Oh. Uh, podiatrist? Yeah, that, that's what it is. Yeah. Paleontologist. Is, uh, he digs up old feet, Study right? of ancient, yeah. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Um, I, I, but oh, I, hold on, Kurt. I'm not so sure I'm enamored with your attitude. I may just put you on hold for a little while. I think he was sincerely saying that. I thought, okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, I've got a foot fetish. Mm hmm And that's uh, obviously become a problem. You know, I've been kind of uh, abusing people's feet. You know, more of the valuable ones. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, who, who, who have you been studying with? Uh, Don King? Yeah, I got bad vocabulary. <laughs> I'm kidding. So... What did he say? The soluble feet? That's what I thought. Vul vulnerable. What? Dis v vulnerable? Yeah, that's it. I see. Are you an actual podiatrist or are you just a... No, an assistant. Just an assistant. Ah. I see. I see. But you're learning to work in a doctor's world. It's like the pedophile that goes to work at the nursery school. Ooh, let me write that down. There you go. All right. See? Oh, so, uh, Kurt, I'm not, I'm not sure if I believe Kurt exactly. He doesn't exactly sound uh, like a doctor's assistant. It doesn't today. sound like he'd make it up either. Oh, yeah. That sounds like it might. All right, so who cares? You like feet? You work at a place where there's feet. Yeah, but he's uh, stimulating himself while he's playing with his feet. Like, I don't think that's You like okay. donuts? You get a job at no, a Winchell's. No. Not if the, the glaze is not from the uh, sugar barrel. <laughs>
<laughs> Bruce, everybody. All right. Hey, Bruce, so what what, what's your last name, by the way? You know, when I was leaving tickets for you at the Will Call at the Super Bowl of Motocross, they were like, what is the name is of the it? guy? I go, Dr. Bruce. <laughs> and what's his last name? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know his last name? I like when people get weird. I go, listen, Dr. Bruce. And I go, no. I'm like, the guy looks like uh, Opie Taylor and Ichabod Crane mixed together. <laughs> I said, listen, what is his last name? I said, listen, if a guy comes up and presents himself as Dr. Bruce, give uh, him the ticket. I swear to God, I went to that window Saturday night and they started laughing. <laughs> what is your last name? I, in 17 years, Drew has not given his last name on the show. I not, am not giving my last name. All right, well, maybe you won't get into the next uh, motocross show, wise ass. Oh. All right, listen, hey, Kurt. Yeah, it's a big deal. You like feet, and you get to see plenty of them. Nah, that's not all. What else are you doing there? Well, there there's, there's often very many photos of feet that the doctor likes to classify, and I uh, and I often take you know try and take the documents home. I see. And return them without him knowing. I see. And uh, you uh, pleasure yourself to these pictures of feet? Absolutely. Yeah. How about you get a job at a shoe store? Uh, good idea. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, what can you do? All right. Okay, what's the, yeah, what do you do? What do you what's do? What's to him? No how come you don't do a family history on this guy? Because I think he's a joker. I don't. Well, know. I don't. I think he's the real thing. Uh, what would you tell him if he was the real thing? Well, I'd get him to my colleague, the psychiatrist that deals in paraphilias and sexual obsessions. Right. Because what's paraphilia? His feet. Well. You, there are various sexual oddities or odd behaviors that right. people would consider them and and things people need to have in the environment of the sex act or to oh. get themselves excited or they can't get excited. Hold on, genius. Look at the time. we got to take a break. Oh, This is crazy. We just took one. Well, look at the time. Oh, look at Anderson. He's, He's passing out over there. Oh, yes. Yeah, he is. All right. We'll be back with more Foot Talk after this. Love Line. I'm Adam Perola. That is Dr. Bruce filming for Dr. Drew. One more night and uh, the fabulous return of Dr. Drew, everyone. Dr. Bruce, uh, doing a decent job, though. Is that where you're screaming at me? Calling you I, uh, things that Anderson has to bleep out? I'm a motivator. I'm like uh. Vince Lombardi. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to hire you to motivate him. You are me. an asshole. <laughs> Who was that? That was Violent J uh, from the Insane Clown Posse. You follow us, bro? Oh, yeah. Kurt? Religiously. Kurt? Yeah. You're 20. Yeah, you got to me. Yeah, I know. You got your foot problem. Yeah, hold on a second. Listen, jackass, move your sticker, <laughs> you idiot. Start doing your job. How dare you? Have me talk to Kurt again with his oh, foot problem. Here's a guy. This must be your brother. Yeah, we were done with Kurt. Kurt's a jack off. No, Kurt needs to get some professional help. I'm wondering about his. Family of origin, yeah, or family on. of disorder. Do you really want to dig into Kurt and his foot fetish? No, he needs to get help. Though. He needs to know that. Okay. Okay. Kurt, you go. You go to a therapist and talk about this, or you lose your job. Okay. All right. Oh. Yeah. You, did you believe him? I didn't believe. I him. believed him. Well, you're an idiot. You believe in God too, you idiot. Tony, I fear yes, him. Sir. <laughs> you fear God. That's <laughs> don't. Uh, yeah, first off, I just want to say what an honor it is to talk to a real man's man, not a spaz. So thank you, Adam, for taking my call. Thank you, Tony. Was, was that an offhanded slam at Dr. Spaz? I not think at all, it was. Not at all, but okay. it is true. You are a little hyper, a little spazzy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you got to see him in real life. <laughs> um, first off, um, I don't know where to start. I'll just, in a, a, honest to God, true story. Uh, I work uh, with a couple guys, and uh, we decided to get a P.O. box because we started seeing in the back of Hustler and stuff uh, some real odd uh, porno. Right. And, uh, I'm an aficionado just like Adam. I know everyone from Sake all the way to Ron Jeremy. So right. basically we went off on a, on a weird thing, and we started getting the farmyard uh, fantasy type thing. And uh, at first it was funny and whatever, and uh, I never was sexually turned on by it, but... Uh, uh, I would always get a kick out of it, like a uh, bad train wreck or faces of death type movie, and uh, sure. it started it started getting out of control when I now, was getting... Now, hold on, let me jump in for a second. I've seen these advertisements in the back of the Hustlers, too. Right. It's it's it, They never have a real explicit picture. It's just some chick naked, uh -oh. and she's like leaning against a horse oh, right. or something, but you kind of get the idea you're in for Adam, something. Adam, I couldn't tell... I mean, that... That should be the only picture you should see. It is so disgusting, it's hilarious. Now, does this stuff come from Europe? 
Uh, actually, it's weird you mentioned that. We're big fans of this German company. I've gotten the catalog from them. I'm doing colostomy bag porno now. and uh, Oh, nice. I mean, it's just out of hand where, you know, I get a kick out of it, but, I mean, you wouldn't believe me. I mean... All right, hold on, hold on. How does the colostomy bag porno work? Does oh, it... okay, we're on the radio. So, uh, basically what happens is there's different versions of uh, putting it into the bag and then pouring oh. up the bag on someone and... Uh, Someone they show this is what's weird about German. They show them eating beforehand, and then they do the their thing in the bag, and you see it fill up. And then they take it and just pour it on someone, and then the other guy would masturbate on the bag. You know, just different versions of it. Do and, they uh, do they uh, do they enter the colostomy hole that's in the side of the person? Oh, I, I have not seen that yet, but I have seen an oh. amputee with a hook. Uh, okay. All right. Well, listen. Hold on. I'm no porn director, though. Hold on. Write that. This down is one of your big possible. fans. Okay. Well, your big fans are always like. I'm making colostomy anima, uh, 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 colostomy <laughs> videos. I have the guy insert his penis oh. in the hole that fills the colostomy bag in the side of the person, not just pump the bag. Oh, I, I'm overwhelmed. You know what I mean? This is like saying, you know what? Uh, listen, if I'm making if I'm making a backdoor video, I'm not going to show a guy humping a toilet. <laughs> Let's show him humping the chick's ass. <laughs> That's just bad. That's just poor German directing there. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? All right, so hey, Tony, but hold on now. Go ahead. Now you, you've. By the way, I've never seen the colostomy bag uh, stuff advertised. You must have got on some mailing list. Yeah, yeah, they can. Everything's in German. I don't know what they're saying. I'd love to have an interpreter. <laughs> All right, but hold on. Now, in the in the sex films, in yep. the in the uh, bestiality films, from every everything from giraffes to monkeys, it's out of hand. Wait a minute, no one's honest having. To God, honest to God, who... I can mail it to you. I can wait. Mail wait it. a minute, who is having sex with a giraffe? That, that's what I'm so intrigued about. It's like I'm thinking, what if I saw this lady at the bank, and then two hours later she's getting it on with a walrus? I mean, how am I to know? You know what I mean? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I Tony, a Tony, walrus. slow down. I seen a you what? I have not seen a walrus. Yeah, okay, I understand that. But uh, you, they were just a little hyperbole there to make right. a point. But, and, and by the way, when you're making a point like, that way and yeah. you go bank, you go alliteration. You go, she's <laughs> at the bank and two hours later she's getting all over the buffalo. You see, you used to be there. <laughs> right, right. The walrus would be you start the Walmart. Right. And then she's getting on with the walrus. Uh, See that? That's a good sentence there. Right, right. Okay, but anyway, Tony, uh, what are the animals that you have seen women have sex with? Honest to God, I have seen pigs, horses. I saw a bull, which is unreal because I guess it was a rodeo bull, according to what I gathered from it, because it was burnt many times on its scrotum to get it riled up. So there was actual like. Stitches, actually fresh stitches on the scrotum where they must have, I, I don't know, but I've seen bulls, uh, what, the giraffe I saw. Uh, oh, wait, 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 hold on now. That's on First it. off, how does a chick safely get under a bull, and how does that work? Uh, uh, okay. Tammy, you'll be having sex with uh, the Widowmaker. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I should clarify because... 1,800 uh, pounds. I don't think OSHA's out there uh, uh, investigating. Yeah, I, I should clarify. Uh, a lot of times it's oral gratification. Uh, as in the case of uh, pork, uh, pig product, or a horse, that I have seen them get the mounting, and uh, there's no pulleys or anything like that. It's just an amazing thing. That's why I'm so intrigued by it, and people call me sick, and it's like, I'm not getting off to it. I'm hilarious. You know, a, a woman doing this for money, I mean, that's that's... You know, it's un it's unmentioned. All right, so now, but Tony, how does a woman, and maybe Ann can answer this, safely perform oral sex on a sixteen hundred pound bull? Uh, right. Well, why they, would Ann have right. any right. knowledge of? Ann grew up in a, the eighties, and it was a kind of a anything goes please. type atmosphere. Right. She right. grew up in a beach community where people are much more yeah, relaxed. Those sexually. bulls were running around the beach. I'm not saying she did. <laughs> I'm saying maybe she had friends. She was at a party, I mean, you know. Anne's an old Anne's giving person. you a look like, what drug did you? Do? What drug did Doctor right, Bruce put? Shut up. Okay, they they got like farmhand type guys that kind of like uh, they coax the. Uh, in, in the case of the pig, I mean this thing. Okay, is, no, okay I'm listen, not interested in the I, pig. I want to know the bull. Uh, I got a visual. Shut up! I want to know the bull. I got a 3D visual picture shut, myself. Shut. I don't need any more of this. Shut 
Uh, it's sick. Oh, I, Tony, listen, Tony, you're a listen, sick person. Shut up. I asked how she performs right. oral sex in a bowl safely. I want an answer. Okay, the floor has like a uh, square hole where she pops up from. It's not, it's like in a garage, you know, the, how they change your oil. Yeah, th it all right. It sticks like half of her body up. As a mechanic's pit. Right, right, right. And, uh, or a uh, bestiality pit, if you will. Right. And she goes to town in that nature, and what I've noticed is uh, a lot of times if the bull does get too excited, she ducks down in there. And I see. But I see. Uh, the, the bulls are definitely strapped in, and there's farmhands around. I don't know if they have uh, cattle prods or right. what it is. I see. Okay. And and does the, does, do the animals reach climax? Uh, that, that That's... Absolutely, the greatest part about the whole thing. Uh, okay. get about a gallon worth when they. Uh, laugh. Oh, that's great. And uh, what? What? The what? Who comes more, giraffe or bull? Uh, actually, the giraffe was much more, and the giraffe was almost like a of a tapioca nature. Oh, I see. And what, okay. And hold on. And how big is a giraffe's penis? Oh boy, over a foot and a half. No problem. But it's the width. That really matters with the giraffe. Uh, where the hell do they get a giraffe? And okay. How does this work? Look, Tony, Tony, do you want to know? I wanna... should mention all the animals look very, very male, whatever. They're beaten or whatever, but which I'm not I'm advocating by any means. I'm no, 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 no. Listen, listen, you merely purchase the, the, the product and fund the company, right, but you right. nowhere endorse it. Right, right, right. Right, I see. All right, so now. This, this is where it comes into where. I don't mind getting ribbed on by other guys, you know, because they've seen it too. It's not like or whatever, but I'm the guy who's always last in the room. Everyone's got to walk out and you guys got to see this. Check this out. And they're like, no, really, we've had enough. And, you know, seeing, you know, they actually have animal gangbang, like four pigs and a woman now. I mean, it's out of hand. And the thing is, I really mean it. You've never seen something this humorous. I mean, it's. It's definitely funny. Right. And people don't perceive me. Maybe I have a sick humor. Well, yes. you you know the rhyme. Right. This little piggy went to the market. And this little piggy went home. And this little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy had none. And this little piggy cornholed the Sherman bitch. <laughs> right. right. I don't know the rest goes. But, I remember that one. Okay. Yeah, all right, Tony. Hey, Tony. Yes. Uh, I'm a little mixed on you. I gotta be. I gotta be honest. <laughs> Go I, with it. Go with it. I appreciate the information. Uh huh. And I understand the curiosity factor, but. At some point, don't you think it demeans you a little bit? I mean, yeah. we all know the woman's being demeaned. Anne's worried about the giraffe and his uh, his attorney. But I worry about the woman and uh, the people that are involved with this. And it demeans you to some degree to sit there and watch it, doesn't right. it? Yeah, and, and the thing that I agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying is the fact that afterwards, it's not like I'm proud because I got to finish it. It's It's like a matter of... Wow, how come I'm sick enough to watch the whole all thing, right. You know? so, all right, so why don't you just stop? Do you think you could stop? Okay, yeah, that, it's, it's something right. like that, but the, I do have to mention one last thing. We have a video coming in, and I said after this video I would watch no more, and this has to be like, I don't know. This I is a uh, manatee screwing an underage uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> Vietnamese this, girl. No, 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 this is a uh, quadriplegic lady. <laughs> And she basically, to to make it lightly, she takes on. Uh, <laughs> I got my buddy punching me right now. Sure. She takes on uh, insects, you could say. She puts them inside and whatnot. Sure. Uh, I don't well, know. I okay, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, who puts it in? Does someone put it in for her? I mean, she doesn't have use of her arms or legs. Right, right. What happens, I guess, from what I understand, reading it or whatever, is watch ex uh, the ex lady or whatever they call her. Right. Uh, have insects pull, coming out of every orifice. Tony, right, are you man, married? Dad. Wait a second, let's find out about He's Tony. married to his job and his religion. Are you kidding? Yeah, <laughs> my, and my job, that's where the problem, I don't, you know, with all this, I have no reason to lie, but uh, my uncle uh, kind of runs a little bookie thing, so I do like a, uh, a, a little muscle work for him, so to speak. And I, I'm not lying, Shocking. but what happens, what happens is with this style of work, and all or. Ooh. Yes. Hold on. Tony used the uh, F word, so uh, Anderson had to give him the uh, X. All right. Now, hold on. Let me say this. First off, is it, let me address the quadriplegic with the insect in the coos uh, situation. I respect this woman. There's a lot of people that are sitting home collecting uh, Social Security and disability who have uh, disabilities. This is someone who's not handicapped. She's handicapable. She's out there earning a living and not sucking the teat of Uncle Sam. 
waiting for that $637 check every two weeks in the mail. Here's someone who's proud. Here's someone who's out there forge a living for herself. Maybe not a first career choice. Probably wasn't the kind of thing she wanted to do right out of high school. But uh, the road has taken a turn, and she's making a lemonade out of lemons. Look, these are sick people. <laughs> Tony is addicted to this form of behavior. This is not, it's not, de it's worse now. What's a worse word than degrading? <clears throat> this is destructive. Effed stuff. up. It's effed up. It's destructive. It's destructive to Tony. And Tony's in a vicious cycle here. And I doubt he's going to be able to just quit doing this. And I'm, I'm even afraid to ask what his relationships are like with women. Why don't you ask about his family upbringing? No, the guy's no. out breaking Listen. legs for Uncle Guido. He's out. <laughs> How watch. dare you assume he was an Italian American? <laughs> Just because he ran some books. Because I'm from New York. And my, my friend Tony had an Uncle Guido. Tony, are you Italian? Tony, Tony, are you a, are you of Italian descent? 100% Pisces. All right, just, <laughs> just a coincidence, I assure you. I I assure you. There are many misconceptions about the way Chinese oh. women drive and uh, black men having a bigger ass. Uh, and uh, Italians being involved with the mob, all uh, all brutal stereotypes. That's, listen, my father, all the Jews and Italians from New York, they hang out together, and I must admit, listen, Tony, right, where's Tony? Fine. We need to get Tony some help. No, Tony's, Tony's good, listen. Tony, you just promise me the quad one is the last one, all right? I guarantee you it will, and I, I really mean this. Thank you for sharing this great moment in radio history. Thank and you, I, Tony. And I have to say one thing, Adam, I'm not like one of these suck-ups, but... That man show, man. The man show boy, all the stuff there. You, you got a great humorous intellect, and uh, I really appreciate it. And I'll guarantee you that this is the last video. Thanks, by You guys from uh, this day on. You guys are great. All right. Uh, Arriva Darchi. I love that, Tony. It's a paisan. <laughs> not, to, not to stereotype for You see girl. why women love Italian men? Uh, certain type women, like yeah. certain type of Italian men. All right, let's uh, let's talk to Jay over here. I've never seen one of those bestiality movies. There's certain things that I realize that are out there and that I don't have to see. Yeah, and eating that, feces, uh, pornos, and yeah, the those one kind of uh, where they rape the colostomy bag. Yeah, that sounds pretty gross. But what people should understand is what he's describing. There is a cycle to it, and it takes more and more to get somebody stimulated, and it comes back to very unhealthy behavior. That needs. How help. dare you it's, label Tony unhealthy? As you are asking other people about their families of origin, All after right. a simple threesome, this guy's watching the animal Just kingdom, be, and uh, he cannot Mother indulge Nature. in a simple enema bag. <laughs> uh, uh, porn every once in a while. How amongst, dare you? Amongst a group of hardened sex criminals, he's Jay? the last in the room. <laughs> Jay, <laughs> nose stuck to the team. Jay, yes, you're set. You're uh, 19. What's up? Uh. Well, I heard you earlier today, or earlier tonight, um, I don't get violent with the women, like, when they break up with me. I just, like, get a reaction after I break up with them, and I, like, I get very self-destructive. I start drinking a lot, or, you know, just anything to take my mind off of them. Yeah, I mean, my I grades see. go down, I start ditching school, I just, like, I get... And it's and it's normally girls like well I'm only in relationships that are, you know something more than you know six months or whatever I mean they're usually eight months a year or whatever and then I start getting really destructive after we break up. Yeah, you're 19. How many of these you been in? Um, my first one was at age well I was a freshman in high school. My first one that was a year. Then I didn't I got really destructive and I didn't want to talk to any girls for about a year and I kind of saw a girl in between then but then senior year I dated this other girl for a year and then just recently as a freshman in college I dated a girl for eight months I see and did they always break up with you yeah I refuse I refuse to break up with women I view it as you can always work something out I mean my parents have been married for like 40 years. I mean, they got married when yeah. my mom was 16, my dad was 19. All right. Well, we had one of those tonight already. Hey, Jay? Yeah. Let me ask you this and uh, think about it before you answer. Do you, you will not get out of a relationship, you will not end a relationship, but will you behave in a manner that gets them to end the relationship? Hmm. Oh, mm. ah, not so dumb <laughs> after all, is he? 
maybe you're bringing this on yourself. Maybe this is a syndrome. This is uh, some sort of thing that this this repetition, this fantasy that you live out. Lord knows, I've done this myself many times. Because your your biggest fear is getting dumped, but yet you you force someone to dump you at the six month part of a you know at the six month uh, uh, mile marker road marker in a relationship. Do you do that? Well, first off, are you what done are you recycling? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I see. <clears throat> do you do? Do you act? Why do they dump you? Well, let me tell you something. Women are fairly forgiving, and, and I think they would like a relationship to go on, provided the guys acting the way they want them to act in the relationship. Now you might listen. I've been dumped by every chick I've ever been with, but it's never. It's never because. Uh, it's never because they got tired of me. It's because they got tired of me acting the way I was acting. And if I straightened out, they would have stayed with me. Well, the problem is, is though, I've never cheated on them. Uh, I, yeah. like, I never cheated either. The one girl I lied to, I lied about going to a party. Yeah, well, listen. She got I got really pissed, and she broke up with me. All the other ones, I mean, I really don't know why. I, yeah. I never asked them for an explanation, but yeah. the one I did was because I went to a party and told her I wasn't going to a party. Yeah, but that ain't it, because you had to have some build-up, some history some groundwork laid for that it wasn't just you went to a party and didn't tell her about it yeah you're not you're not talking about the quality of the relationship the nature the intimacy the relationship characteristics you're talking about just a pattern of you meet somebody you're with them for 10 months then they break up with you and you get yeah. violent for a year what, yeah. well, what do you do when they're storing up all this anger during that year what kind of communication is going on between you and the other person what type of people are you going out with what was your relationship like with your mom uh, I never, I hardly ever went out with girls when I was, I mean, we had a strict rule because I'm always afraid of girls cheating on me that I told her I won't go out with girls unless you go out with guys. And they never had a problem with that. So I never went out with girls, you know, at least alone. In groups, it was a different story. And like... Oh, he meant go out socially with other girls. Yeah. Like, All right, like, hold on a second. Let me Let me talk to Bruce for a second. You see, and tell me if you're getting this vibe. Jay is sort of wondering about women and why they're dumping him and what's going on, and he's, he's sort of chalking it up to uh, 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 outside third parties and outside energy and uh, women women just being... Well, women are bad. They women are being bad. Uh, Jay sounds very angry, right. very controlling, and like I would dump his ass after, not after eight months, but after about eight hours. You know what I mean? But women will take a little I've bit I've talked more. to Jay for four minutes of an ass full of Jay. He's getting these women to dump him, and I don't blame him for a second, and then he goes into one of his... How angry he is. He goes into why he's angry. Jay? Yes. Okay. What do you think you, of that? You need to not focus on the final outcome, which is how angry you are when they dump you. You need to focus on the part that gets them to dump you so consistently. Well, I mean, I don't, I always tell them if they want to hang out with me, because like I heard you guys over the break or when you guys put me on hold, I always tell them if they want to hang out with other guys, I would like to hang out with them and get to know the guy first. Because, I mean, I mean, as a guy, you're always going to be suspicious when they're like, oh, I'm going to hang out with some so-and-so when you never meet them. Yeah, but listen, it doesn't sound like you're having an intimate relationship with somebody. It just sounds like you're laying down some rules, and then you're getting them to agree to some rules. This is a, a relationship. It's an intimate relationship. It's not an employee-employer relationship. It's not a coach-player relationship. It's an intimate relationship, and it sounds like you're intellectualizing the whole thing. But see, we both agree upon it. I always well, sure. I, I mean, I always ask them. Well, she, I tell them if they have any problems. Right. It's, well, just because she, you know, she, you had your lawyer draft something up and you had her sign it in front of her lawyer it doesn't make it legal. All right, listen, Jay. Yeah. There's a part of you that's almost something, robotic yeah. with with women. There's not. There, you're not an intimate guy. You're an angry guy, and that's what ultimately gets them to dump you. They don't feel anything. They just feel an angry Jay, and you got to get at some of that anger and figure it out. Go to some therapy, mellow out. Don't have a relationship for a year. Why does it take a minute? Do, do therapy for a year, read some books, and get your ass together, and then enter a relationship when you're in shape. Get to be friends with a girl for about a month and see what happens. Let me tell you something about a relationship. It's like entering the octagon in one of those ultimate fighting championships or a boxing ring. If you're going to sit around, smoke cigarettes, and drink beer... For a year, and you and you decide you're going to walk in the ring, you're going to get pummeled. 
you got to be doing your push-ups. you got to be jumping rope. you got to be doing your road work. you got to be hitting that heavy bag. You know what that's equivalent of? That's equivalent in a relationship to getting your head together, to doing your therapy, to reading your books, to taking your walks, to clearing out your head so that when the bell rings and you're actually asked to perform in the ring, you can make a good showing. And that's what you've been Thank doing you. for the last 10 years. No, not me. I've been drinking beer and smoking. <laughs> we'll be back. Yep, it is Love Live. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Bruce over there. Lit is going to be in here at the uh, end of the week. And a uh, uh, surprise guest, Dr. Drew, everybody. You know his work from, well, I guess you know it from this show. Whoa! I don't know if he's uh, taken ill or he was replaced some years back. Maybe left with poor man in the uh, early 90s. Uh, he left on thir on last Wednesday. Oh, was it? It feels like it's been longer. And uh, so far, uh, Bruce has come in here and done just a, uh, I was going to say a whale of a job, but I'm looking for a smaller aquatic animal. Don't mention animals. Yeah, that's like a walrus of a job. Oh, a giraffe of a job. <laughs> Remember what you told him, alliteration. A dolphin of a job. A flounder of a job. Ah, I'll give you a grouper of a job. Brian? Hello. You're 21. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm, well, I'm all right, except for my problem. All right. Um, all right. I'm a gay male, and whenever I have sex with my with my boyfriend, he, well, lately, I mean, we, we lube up and everything as well as we can over the condom, of course. Sure. And I have, like, whenever I go to number two, I, I leave, like, little blood trails. I see. You're gay. I, <laughs> true, 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 true. All right, so your your behymen has been broken many times. Uh, well, I don't know. We're still sort of in the beginning of that, but I mean, see, that's what I was wondering because I'm like sort of I don't know necessarily inexperienced, but I mean, I guess once you've done it, that's all the experience you really need. Ooh, yeah, that's what the guy told me. Came. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> now let me just figure this out. Yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued by the gay lifestyle. You're the master, right? Adam? You're I'm the master of the gay lifestyle. You're the, you're the back door it's, man. It's one I've been trying to embrace for many years. I just I can't get my penis to go along with it. <laughs> but other, I, I enjoy all other facets of the gay lifestyle. We're very clean. We're very nonviolent. Oh, oh, oh! I'm telling you, there's nothing like the gays. If this society was gayer, it'd be a much better place. You know what I find very funny? What is that? We're so darned clean, but we have, like, the dirtiest type of... Like, we go into the dirtiest place imaginable to have sex. Isn't that weird? I know. It's, it's, a, it's a guy, he's got a... Uh, his his Miata is... Or, you know, the dash is armor all, the tires are armor all. There's not a speck of dust on it. You go into the guy's living room, it's immaculate. It's like a, they can perform surgery in his kitchen. And then he uh, takes his crank and stuffs it into some asshole. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, go figure. Uh, yep. A clear compensation, Brian. Well, but, but uh, anyway, now you you have a boyfriend, right? And uh, do you guys live together? Um. Well, he comes over. I see. We live apart still. We're not that committed. Oh, what a lifestyle! <laughs> That's true. Party, party, party. Maybe you guys want to come over, come. Adams, and uh, you know how it goes. It's raining, man. Oh boy. Oh, what a life. Oh, do I love that gay life. <laughs> and and uh, it's better when you move in. That's why gay means happy, my friend. I know. You get to move in together. You, you got two incomes. You got uh, you, the house looks amazing. It's in pace. It's impeccable. Squeegees you, in the shower. You, squeegees in the shower. Yes. That is so true. We haven't talked about that in years. All gay men who have those Lucite shower doors, they squeegee them off when they're done. You know how I clean my shower door to get the soap scum off it? I pee on it. Oh. oh. <laughs> lovely. That's lovely. a straight man's <laughs> move. <laughs> how do I get the ass off the shower door? I pee on it. That's how. It's angry straight man. All right. So, so now wait a minute. Just hold on with the ass. Now, do you give it to him too? No. Now, see, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. now, don't most... Are most gay relationships this way, where one is the receiver? From what I understand, there's a role. There's a role played in the bedroom. Now, is that role a subservient role? No, not necessarily. It's but just, uh, as the guy who's being uh, anally raped, don't anally you taken? I prefer to think of it as rape. Okay. Don't you think of it as a sort of subservient role? Uh, you're not the aggressor. You're what the female, the equivalent to what the female would be in a traditional heterosexual relationship. 
Yeah, but I don't know. It's not, well, I don't look at it as like a dominance type of act. It's, you know. All right, but what about in your relationship? <laughs> is he the more aggressive one? Does he get his way more? No, we're both, we're both actually pretty guys. We're like, I mean, we go out and play sports and basketball and stuff. And I mean, right. I but know. now, what if some uh, hillbillies were trying to squirt you with a fire extinguisher from the back of their pickup truck? <laughs> would you run it? Who would be the one who would run after them, you or him? Oh, no, no. Uh, well, you know, I don't know. We don't really, <laughs> we don't, see, we're not really even that, like, outwardly gay. Yeah. You know, I mean, in public, we don't hold hands or kiss. I see. Anything. I mean, I we see. Just, we're in kind of a rural area, I rural see. area, and we don't want to yeah, right. cause any trouble. You're, what about your parents? Um, my parents, well, they're fine with it, but they keep it kind of quiet. Brian, yeah, exactly. Adam's dealing with some God-given stereotypes that uh, were delivered yeah, I, to him on... I love the gays. I've the said that many, born. many a time. I, I really... Hey, you know what? I love the gays, too. I, I know. <laughs> you love them. I mean, I really mean it. Here's what we would have with a gayer society. We'd have more recycling. We'd have much less crime. We have just general, better, just sort of overall decency. And fashion. And fashion. Let me, I'll show you something. You'll never see a gay guy change his oil and then dump the motor oil down the storm drain. No. You'll way. never see a gay guy drive down the freeway and toss a bunch of McDonald's wrappers out of the window. Mm -hmm. You'll never have a gay guy get drunk and start beating on some other guy at a soccer game or something. It doesn't happen. These people recycle. They care about the environment. They're into politics. You go down, you go down, go down to the gay section over here. Go down to, uh, go down to West Hollywood. Go down to Santa Monica Boulevard. Go down to Boys Town. You'll never see a more immaculate place. They're constantly digging up the street and improving it. All the storefronts are impeccable. It's clean. It's safe. This is what you get with the gays. Why don't you go live there? I wish I was gay. <laughs> I would like to be the official straight ambassador of the gays. Maybe there's a gay person locked inside your body. You know how you start, at them? Hmm. When you're meandering through the porno store, just... Keep on walking into the gay section. Yeah. And I, pick up one and uh, take take it for a drive. I, I know, but you know, I've talked about this with Drew, and here's the, don't take this the wrong way, but gay erotica to straight guys is repulsive. Oh, really? It, 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 it is, is sickening to them. They have a physical reaction to it. It cannot oh. see it. Bruce, if you see a gay erotica, some guys really working, some other guy, it, it hits you on a visceral gut level that's repulsive to you, doesn't it? <laughs> Yes, it does. We can't help it. It's a, it's a straight man's curse. So, uh, All right, anyway, his bleeding anus. What about it? Oh, do I get to... <laughs> <laughs> I've tried, like, sitting in warm of baths and, like, all the house... The six baths, right. And you tried the hemorrhoidal preparations over the counter? Yep, nothing. Well, okay. what, what is See, the bleeding like, from? Uh, Bruce. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. That's all right. What do you think? See how polite Hem is? Hemorrhoids are veins that are used to having low pressure... Of blood going through them, and it, if the pressure builds up, people will strain when they're they have a lot of constipation. Things that cause them to expand uh, beyond the the uh, radius or diameter they should be, as something like that expands, it, the wall weakens, and you have a leakage of blood. So the things that you do are things that would decrease the pressure. People that sit for long periods of time, you know, doctors recommend they sit on something donut. soft, right? It's in a donut. Uh, if you're having the bleeding, you need to have it looked at, first of all, because you're assuming it's coming from the hemorrhoids, and most likely it is. No, he's not saying it's coming from the hemorrhoids. He didn't say he had hemorrhoids, did he? Well, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just... I'm just. Oh, hold on, hold on, like hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Bruce, here's a mistake you commonly make. You read the screen. You see? Don't read the screen. Because he never said he had hemorrhoids on the air. He said he was bleeding from the from the ass. I thought he said hemorrhoids. No, you, you didn't. You, no, he has hemorrhoids, but he never said it. You read it on the screen. Okay. You see, you got away from the state because everyone who's listening to the show doesn't know what you're talking about with the hemorrhoids because you're reading it. Okay. Can I get back to my profound statement? You see what I'm saying? All right. So, Brian. Yeah. Uh, bleeding, rect it's in the category of rectal bleeding. So, one of the very common causes, anal fissures, you can have a little... Like That's pretty good. cutting the wall. Well, but it's certainly consistent with what you're describing. Uh -huh. So what a doctor would do, even if you have hemorrhoids, would probably take a look a little further up with at least an anoscope and make sure that there are not anal there's not an anal fissure causing the bleeding, and may even maybe even use a, a sigmoidoscope because 
you are talking about a very common cause of bleeding hemorrhoids, but then you have anal fissures. What if he stayed away from the uh, cornholing activity for just a couple of, gave his ass a rest? Well, it's, he still should have a doctor look at well, him. There's he, no doctor. Obviously, is, he's traumatized his ass with the, his boyfriend's penis. How right. about how about switching over to a little oral love? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Brian? Yeah. How about you work this guy's ass for a little while and give your own ass a little break? <laughs> that might teach him something. Yeah, stay off the ass for a little while. And let me say this. Obviously, it's a little embarrassing for some guys to go to the doctor and say, listen, I'm, you know, I'm going to get my coolie work pretty no. good. Let me tell you, yeah, the other thing with the gay community, they know they're doctors and they're not at all shy about talking Brian, to Brian, you don't, you don't have, you're not reticent at all about going in and telling some guy uh, you've been getting work pretty good in the anus? Um, well, the thing about my butthole is mm -hmm. that it's as big as a mason jar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that that guy? <laughs> He did it again. <laughs> that was our guy. Yeah. How come you didn't pick up on that? I, I don't know the guy. Drew knows the guy's voice. Of course you got a sense of humor. Don't You can't be uptight and have a penis in your ass. Uh, <laughs> that's the mason jar guy. Huh? I don't know if it was him. We got to play that for Drew because it may have been a guy doing a, a mason guy thing. But let mason. me say this. Let me say this about uh, gay and anus. I think there should be gay doctors like there's mafia doctors. Well, they, they don't you know, have to be you know that saying? secretive. They're no, no, you, know, you know what I'm saying? You take a bullet, some other wise guy shots you, you can't go to the hospital, you get reported, you go to the mafia doctor. You got an anal, anal fissure from your boyfriend cornholing you too much, you go to the gay doctor. You know, you got a little pink eye from some semen in your eye, you go to the gay doctor. He keeps it on the down low. You know what I mean? No questions asked. Just fix that fissure, give you some lube, send you on your way, you pay cash. It's not you quite that clandestine. Yeah, you should be a gay doctor. Because I have that That'd be empathy. a good gig for you. All right, we're going to take a break. First, let's uh, say hi to Jennifer. Jennifer? Yeah, hi. You're 16? Yeah. Um, okay, um, I think I'm on the verge of anorexia. Mm hmm But um, I don't think it's serious. I think it's called anorexia nervosa. How much do you weigh? 117. How tall are you? Um, about 5'4". You're overweight. Four. True, please. She's not ah. overweight. All right, hold on. All right, this is a very important call. Stay on the line, Jennifer, because we really want to talk to you. It's a very important subject. That's right. Okay. What, what was it? We'll be back. The love line of uh, Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Spence. God. <laughs> Over there. You call more names than when I was 14 years old <laughs> and riding on the wrong bus. Called the uh, Bruce Jackal 10 <laughs> seconds ago. All right, uh, I'll forget about that phone number. Let's uh, let's keep rolling along. Let's, see, let's, let's, let's burn some calls. What do you say, man? Uh, Jennifer. Yeah. All right, so uh, you think you may be anorexic, yeah? Yeah. Five four one sixteen. Um, yeah. Okay, and are uh, you throwing up? Uh, no, um, that's bulimia. You take well, what can be both, right? Well, big, yeah. Big issue is how do you see yourself? Do you see you, you, yourself as as being overweight? Yeah. When you objectively know you're not. I mean, they, there's an a disorder of body image of your perceived body image is one of the requisite problems with an anorexic condition. So. You taking laxatives? No. What are you eating? Um, I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat lunch, and I'll eat dinner so that my parents don't suspect anything. Okay. But only um, really small portions. Like I won't eat a lot, and usually I'll put a lot in my mouth and not swallow, it and then sit on a, in a napkin or something. Yeah. You guys, so uh, you sit down for dinner every night with your parents? Yeah. Well, but you have the altered body image. You have the preoccupation with your weight, probably over exercise. Yeah. And so you're well on the way. So this is a huge problem in this country, and a lot of it has to do with body image and the way it's presented to younger girls, and it has a terrible... All right, what should she do? Terrible offer. Well, she's calling us. She's willing to acknowledge that there, she may be on the way to having a full-blown problem with anorexia. She needs to see somebody. How, how can she get to see somebody? She's how old? 16. 16. So... Just wow. see a therapist and work with someone. The, the uh, recovery rate is not that good as you go wow. further on in time. Wow. Bulimia right. much better. Go to, o to OA. Medications. Talk to counselor. At talk to counselor first at school. All right. All right. Anna. Yes. Hello. You're 21. What's up, Perky? Um, I'm okay. I'm a stripper, and I fell in love with um my best friend who was my roommate when he was arrested. All right. No wait. wait. You're a stripper. Uh huh. Topless or bottomless? Um, actually, usually I only do, um, on stage I only do topless, and then for private dances I 
go fully nude. Oh, really? Yes. What state are you calling from? Oregon. Yeah, you got to get out that way. <laughs> fully nude for the for the lap dance. How much? No, I mean, well, how much? Yeah. Um, twenty dollars, and you know, some people give you more. It just kind of depends on. All right, now please uh, help me understand something. I I may just be drunk and have an erection, but I swear to Christ, some of those songs have been condensed. Uh, actually, I, people tell me that too, but not really. It's just sometimes they're played a little faster. Oh, okay. So well, it seems like it, but well, okay. Just as long as there's no uh, there's, there's no foul honesty, play. Honesty. Yeah, listen, that's what I mean. I mean, a a four and four minute and ten second song is magically two fifty six. <laughs> now you have to be pretty drunk to not. And know. my penis is going. What's up? <laughs> I just uh, twenty bucks on Stairway to Heaven, and uh, I got like two fanny shakes, and it's done. Then you can never go wrong with Nine Inch Nails. They always have really long songs. Yeah, but you guys speed them up. Sounds like uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks are covering it. <laughs> All right, so uh, okay, so uh, you you do that, and you fell in love with a guy. You yeah, he's my roommate and my best friend. He was your roommate and your best friend. Yes. Yeah. And what's he in jail for? Um, he was a drug supplier. I see. How and long? How long is he in jail for? He's in for one more year. Uh huh. And I've been waiting for him, and I've waited a year now. Yeah. Um, but my family is just like completely against him, and now I've kind of turned away my family for him. And yeah. I don't know yeah. exactly how to work it. Where I. All can... right. Well, what's up with your family that you decided to get in the strip in anyway? Uh, see, the strange thing is nothing. nothing. My family has been really great. Yeah. Um, Where's dad? Dad's at home with mom. Yeah. Don't you have some issues with men, some power with men? I never did before, but now I do. Yeah. Never before. And wait, you, you, you love your daddy? I, oh, my daddy is the greatest thing in the whole world. I'm, I'm a daddy's girl. And you love your mommy? Uh, mom and I have always butted heads ever since I was little. Over attention for daddy? Um, over attention in general, I never really got any from her. Ah, interesting. Because there's always an attention issue that goes on, usually with daddy and strippers. Absolutely. Do you, do you have to do anything to tolerate the stripping? Do you drink or use any oh. substances? Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm completely straight. I don't drink. I don't, smoke. I don't do anything. Your parents know you strip? Yes, actually. They, they found out when he was taken to jail, and I said, um, yeah, I'm a stripper, and dad flipped out, and mom yeah. was actually the more understanding one, which is very strange. Yeah, that, that's uh, got to be delight for any parent, though. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, the good news is she's a stripper. I mean, the bad news is she's a stripper, but the good news is, I mean, the bad news is she's waiting for a drug addict uh, boyfriend to get out of prison oh, no, so no. they can have He's drug, addict drug addict stripper kids. Uh, I know, he just sells, he sells them. Okay, listen, listen. Please don't let this guy get you pregnant. You're gonna you're gonna give birth to a moccasin. No, I'm not that stupid either. Okay. But you're, well, listen. Uh, you're 21. You shouldn't wait a year for this guy to get out. But who the hell are we to talk you out of it? I mean, you love the guy. You correspond with him. Mm -hmm. You go and visit him in prison. Yes, I drive actually six hours to visit him. All right. Here's the reality, Hannah. This is the best your relationship's ever gonna be. Ugh, why? You, you know why? Because it's like everything in life. You know the best part of a new car? It's to drive over to the dealership. That's the best part yeah. of having that new car. It's driving to the dealership knowing you're going home in the car. It's not when the it's not when it gets keyed a week later. It's not when you get your parking tickets, it's not when you get your insurance bill. It's not even the drive home from the dealership when you're worried about getting into an accident or going through a mud puddle. It's two. It's the anticipation that's the best part. And her anticipating this and having him locked in, more fantasy. It'll never get better. He'll get out. He'll be beaten on her in three weeks. Yeah. So Anna has some core issues here. There's no, and let's get it straight. There's nothing wrong with strippers. They're not bad people. World needs them. They have issues, and they're in an, in an industry that is inherently abusive right. and degrading to them. She's well, 21. She's saying she has no issues. Don't get pregnant. Nah. Stay with this guy. Screw the family. See what happens. I hate you. No, for absolutely not. Anyway, Go Kelly. to a therapist and get honest about what's really going on. All right. Kelly, 19, what's up? Hi. Um, I was going to say, but I think you're pretty hot, Adam. Oh, me? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen him? Yeah. Oh. A long time ago. Okay. Like on Love Line before yeah, yeah. when it was on TV. Yeah, baby. Uh, so, I have a weird problem. It's mm -hmm. actually that I more so get really emotional after sex, anything like that. Yeah. I don't know why. After after orgasm? Yeah, pretty much. You cry after orgasm? Mm. Yeah. 
Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I do too, because it's like, <laughs> it's just like, that would be $100. Oh, I go, oh, come on, baby, no. It only took five minutes. Come on, give me a break, honey. Huh? $100. Uh, okay, right. so what, what's going on with your emotional state? Are you, are you just crying, or do you feel real sad, or do you feel... I don't know. It's like, I don't, I feel like I'm an emotional person, but All right, that's the one time when it really... All right, what do we need to know about you? Ever raped, no. molested, abused? No uncle did anything weird to you. Daddy didn't wasn't killed in the motorcycle accident when you were four. No. No abandonment. No freakiness. No, no, really. Nobody ever got on top of you and didn't get off of you. <laughs> no. No one, no one ever forced you to do anything you didn't want to do. Long term relationships or frequent short term relationships. What are we talking about? Uh, too long term. All right, and crying each time. Every t every time. All right. Uh, therapy, therapy, and more therapy. <laughs> we got to take a break. I don't know what this is. I mean, it's connected, obviously, to her, her upbringing, but she says everything's great in the past. I don't know why she, she cries for some women. Women will cry right. when can happen. Maybe it's, it, it's part, women will cry with an emotional release. Maybe the release of the orgasm just forces the tears. Maybe they're not tears of sadness. Yes, We're, these are tip of the Thank iceberg you. calls. There's more information. Fantastic. Yeah. We'll be back. Well, there it is. There you have it. My throat is sore from yelling at Dr. Bruce all night. I want to thank Dr. Drew for coming back. Dr. Drew tomorrow night. I want to thank Dr. Bruce for doing a whale of a job. And yes, I, I stick with whale. Oh. Sperm whale of a job this uh, whole week and part of last week filling in for the inept and lazy Dr. Drew. He'll take a verbal beating when he comes in. Oh, rest assured. All right, so thanks, uh, Bruce. You're Always welcome. a pleasure. Anytime. Uh,